During the DAPDAP VC 2020, they introduced a couple of new property wrappers that we can use with SwiftUI, and among them are app storage and scene storage. And in this video, I want to show you how you can use them and what you need to, what's the difference between these two and what's the difference to a, a state property wrapper. And so in essence, these two property wrappers are an alternative to whenever you use at state. But when you use at state, this property is only temporarily. So the next time you launch your application, this property is set to the original value that you defined in your code. What if you have a situation where you, didn't, you want to keep the same value for your users? So next time they launch, they can just kick off at the same moment they left. And this is when app storage and scene storage come into play. Property wrappers add some extra functionality for us that we don't need to take care of. And in this case of these two, they save this value in user defaults. So every time the user is updating this value in the background of this property wrappers, it is safe to user defaults, which raises the question, if it's safe to user defaults, why do I need two? Because there's only one for each value the way user default save something is with a key value pair as a key value pair. You give it a key, the name of this user defaults value, and then the actual value. Why would you have here two different ways of storing them? You see that the storage name tells you it means it's stored in somewhere. And now you know it's in the user defaults. And then you have here this uh, one, that, one that with the name app and one with scene. So most of the time you only work with one scene so instead of window, if you prefer the Windows word, you only have one scene or one window of your application for the iPhone, for example. But for the iPad, you can use split screen. You can allow in the project settings that the user can have multiple scenes. And this is when we will only then we will see a difference when we use here the scene storage. Because for each scene that you have, suppose you are having a note app and you want to show the same note that the user was editing last time and the next time you want to store which node was edited last. If you have two scenes, you need to, two scenes, you need to store two different nodes probably to use the defaults to remember which one to show next time you launch. So obviously you need to, it's not enough to have just one user defaults value. And it's really nice because they, we've seen storage, they give you this possibility very easily. Now let's see an example where you can actually um, enjoy the nice way of working with this. In a previous video, I did start by making here a little photo editor and you can find the link for the video in the description. I did make here this little photo editor view where we have this image, where we have actually two images and I did cut out here mini me so we can manipulate these two images the, I mean the kitty mini me herself and the background. So this is what you see. You have here two images and we can add different view modifiers to both images. And in this example, we can manipulate the background blur by making the background a little bit more blurry or less. The yellow is just a bug from Xcode and we can change the background of the background image and we can change the brightness of the background image and the brightness of the foreground image. This is a good example where we would next time when we launch this application want to keep our settings here. How are we going to save these values? So the next time the application is launched, I still see the same value. So as I said, we have app storage and scene storage. And I'm now going to use here app storage. And I'm going to use app storage for one of them. So instead of at stage, which is a temporarily um, it's for temporary values. I'm using app storage. And if you have worked with user defaults before, usually you have to give, you need to give it a key. So it, which is a string. And you see here, if I type app storage, open parentheses, it tells me it, I want to have a key, which is a string. So in this case, I'm just going to use the same name here, just the background blur. So now it gives me here an error. And if you type on it, you see that you, since we are working with User defaults, I cannot use CG float. This is not a supported type. We have here um, bool, ints, I can use a double, a URL, a data type. So the easiest way for me, because you are working with numbers, is to make to use here double, which will cause my viewers now to complain. 
So I use here this blur and I can just use a, I can convert a double to a CG float. But I'm also using it here in my sub view, which means I need to change all of these types, which I will do quickly. So, and then I need to change all of my types to doubles. So the thing that I changed is basically, so all my properties that I'm going to use here are doubles now because I can easier use them with user defaults. So now I have here this one property that is stored and restored for the next launch. So I'm going to, I'm now going to launch my application. Um, right now I did not use the photo editor view as my main view. So in the, um, in my window group, I'm not using the content view, which is just an empty one. I'm using my photo editor view. So now if I run this for the iPhone, I have now launched this application for the first time. And my three values here are set to the one that I defined in my photo editor view. So my blur was set to zero. My background brightness was minus 0.3 and my foreground brightness was 0.1. So now if I change this, all these three values, it's probably not what I would do. I can change all three of these values and for the user, he wouldn't see any difference between these. But this blur value is now stored on disk. You need to wait a little bit maybe because user defaults are not instantly saved. The system's trying to optimize this. And if I now press my stop build button, the application has no time to finish this. If you normally just close your application like so, it will do this saving automatically. It has time to save it. Okay, so now I stop and we start again. So you see that my two state properties are reset to the original one that I defined in my view. But the background blur that I saved here with app storage is restored to the same value that it used before. And this is really nice. We hardly had to do anything for this. So it's fairly easy to use app storage. So now in order to also see the scene storage, I'm going to add a scene storage to my two brightnesses here. So in this case, I'm again changing my state property to scene storage. And again, you have to here give a string value name. So I'm using the same name as my property here. It's probably better to save them somewhere else. And then my scene storage. And I give it here the string value name foreground brightness. As I already said, you won't see anything if you only have one scene like in the iPhone. That's why I'm going to run this on a iPad. And under your project settings, under the target, under general here, make sure you are using support multiple windows. Otherwise you won't see the effect. So again, since I run this for, for the first time, my background blur is again zero, but I'm going to create another second scene. So I'm dragging one up from the dock. Okay, a little bit better like this. So let's play and I'm going to change here the two brightnesses. And you see, I'm only changing it on the left side. And now I'm changing the blur. And you see, I'm doing this on both instances because I used for the blur, the app storage. So for this, it only has one user defaults value and it's automatically updated wherever I access this one. So my two images always have the same background blur. But since for the brightnesses, I used a scene storage. In this case, I have here two different values for these two scenes. So for this little image editor, I probably am still fine with having a app storage simply because it's the same image. So you could now decide, argue which one to use better. For example, if you were saying this is the same image. I should have the same settings. So I can still app storage is the nicer way of doing this. On the other side, if the user sees the same image, he can have two different tries with this image. So he has, he can just have a comparison. So in this case, it's a nicer comparison to see if I can find very different settings that I still like. And since I used now here my user default settings when I stop and rebuild. These settings are still there. But and actually in this case I had to um, the scene storage 
didn't update correctly just because I did here press the stop button. If you leave the application and go in another one, it has time to really save it. But it, it's just when you work with Xcode that you need to pay a little bit of attention. To wrap it up, you saw that we had this little application where initially we had its state properties, but these are not stored the next time the user launches the application. So we replaced at state with app storage and scene storage, which saves these values in user defaults. You just have to pay attention that not all values are supported to save as user defaults. Previously had CG float, this is not working, but it double does. And the other thing is that we also saw the difference between app storage and scene storage. And scene storages are interesting if you are working on multiple scenes for example, on the iPad in split screen mode. These two property wrappers you can use for iOS 14 and higher. If you want to save user defaults, if you are on a lower version like iOS 13, you still can save your values in user defaults, but you need to do a little bit more work. And I'm going to show you this in a future video. So if you like this video, you may want to make sure that you don't miss it. You can hit the subscribe button and let me know if you already have some use cases where you want to use app storage and scene storage in your own projects. So leave a comment below. And with that, I say until next time, happy coding.